Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. I did something that I've never done before. I tried to do a full week's worth of workouts and I succeeded. So buckle up because this is a long video and you're going to hear me make probably a lot of mistakes because I've never talked this long. So going on, we're doing band pull aparts and I'm using the yellow crossover symmetry and that's 10 pounds for the bands. And I'm just hitting about 30 to 35 reps when it comes down to it. Because if I go any heavier, it starts to piss off my shoulders. So I've just been really increasing the reps when it comes to trying to do progressively overloading these rear delts. Jumping on to a single arm cable lateral raise. I'm using an ankle cuff and it's about forearm height. And what I'm doing is just going up to the side not going much higher than that. And this has been giving me an awesome burn. Also, it's been allowing me to train a failure without any pain. If you guys have been following me for a long time. You will know that I have shoulder issues. I do not sit there and deny the fact that I have shoulder issues. It's one of the reasons why I have so much damn equipment in my basement. I had shoulder issues. I was not able to hold a freaking dumbbell or a kettlebell. So I ended up having to work around that, which is why you see a rhino, you see a leg press, you see leg extension, leg curl machine, all that crap came from having shoulder issues. So there was me hitting failure, struggled, but I was able to get it done. Jumping back down to the lat pull downs, again, we are going to failure. 150 pounds is on the stack. This is a one-to-one -one ratio on the prime single stack, so it is 150 pounds of actual pulling weight. You can see it in my face. I am struggling. I tried to take one more shot at it, use a little bit of momentum, but it was technical failure, and I cut it at that point. Jumping down to the floor, we're doing a high lat pull-down single arm. So you see I'm kneeling on the floor, and one of the hardest things about this exercise is keeping yourself planted on the floor. You see I have a little bit of side to side movement on that point. I'm just gonna kick this guy over so I can do the other side. I'm not gonna move the camera around because that would just honestly take away the workout. I'd have too much time and I'm trying to maintain a good consistency when it comes down to my rests. So here we go. And this is, like I said, 160 pounds for the stack. You're looking at a two to one ratio. It's 80 pounds for pulling strength. And it's just hard to keep yourself actually planted on the ground. And that's why I got a little bit of side to side movement there. Hopping on to the hammer strength. This is the incline press. And uh, I don't know what the heck weight that is. 245s and a 25 on each side. So we are looking at 180 plus 50, uh, 230 pounds. So I don't know what the heck that actually translates into because hammer strength is obviously a leverage type machine and has a different angle to it, but I haven't been able to find anything online when it comes to actual weight of the hammer strength. Jumping on to some knee raises. This is actually a fun little uh, setup I created. I'm using the Bells of Steel Hydro Row Seal Pad for a back pad, and I'm using the Matador with some hip thruster pads to keep my elbows from slamming into that bar, because honestly, it really hurts if you don't have those hip thruster pads. So this is something that I've been doing, because like I said, have bad shoulders, folks. All right, this is a priority for me this time. I have been just irritated by these little things called wannabe calves. They are just hard to train for me. I was having some issues behind the knee where if I went to train my calves, I would always have some weird like, I don't know, cramping type feel that would cause me to have to stop before I hit failure. So I pretty much backed off the weight when I started off about a month and a half ago. And I was using basically 225s and 210s on each side. And I started off doing like 30 reps for high reps, and I built myself all the way up to this weight, which isn't super impressive, but it's a hell of a lot better than the 25s and the 10s that I was using earlier. 
So my priority when it comes to building my calves is I am going to be doing seated calf raises, doing three to four sets to damn near failure every time. And I am doing standing calf raises, which you'll see in a second. I'm doing standing calf raises using the Rhino. So here I am, I'm using my calf block. It is a cheap calf block from Amazon that is no longer made anymore, but it does the trick. Gets the job done, that's all that really matters. So using the Rhino, we have two 45s on each side, plus whatever the Rhino weighs, I believe it's like 32 pounds or something around that, my, around that area. And I decided, um, I asked my girlfriend, because my birthday was about a week and a half ago, if she would get me a Henny belt for the belt squats. Because the Rhino belt squat is, uh, the belt that's included there is not the best, and it digs into your hips and kind of gives you like, I don't know, like a hip rash or something going on there. So a little bit of discomfort, so I asked for this belt. So I wanted to go ahead and try it using belt squats, even though my knees were feeling kind of cranky. I said, what the hell, let's go and try some belt squats. And you can definitely see that I'm struggling. The knees were just being ridiculously stupid. But, but the Henny belt is a lot more comfortable than the Rogue Rhino belt that was included, which is very good to hear because if you think about it, if you spend all the money on a Rogue Rhino, and then the belt is just a pain in the ass and is super uncomfortable, kind of defeats the purpose of having a belt squat, don't you think? So I'm gonna go ahead and try this one out for a couple weeks and I'll let you guys know if I think it is a lot better. Jumping on to single leg press, I don't know what the weight is, 245s on each side and a 10, just doing single legs because I didn't really feel like adding a ton of weight to this thing. When it comes to loading the leg press, you really do need to have a lot of weight when it comes to this one to get a really good workout. So it's a lot easier and a lot more convenient to go ahead and do single legs. Plus, it's probably a good idea to train single legs because most of us don't realize, but we don't really do anything that's bilaterally when it comes to our daily life. So something as simple as doing stairs, you're stepping up one step at a time. So doing something that's unilaterally is going to benefit you in the long run when it comes to overall health. Plus, like I said, it's more convenient for me because I didn't have to load more weight. Jumping on to our leg extensions. This was another one, like I said, my knees were kind of irritated, but surprisingly doing this one wasn't really irritating it much more. So I feel like I'm only on 110 when it comes to the weight, maybe 120. But you can see that I am going as far back as I possibly can, and I'm getting a very good stretch. And this is allowing me to train with a very nice full range of motion, which hopefully will bring up that stupid VMO muscle, because right now it's just not very large. When it comes to aesthetics, the quads are something that I am working on as well. Popping on to the seated leg curls. This one, I'm trying to do a small hold at the very bottom, but unfortunately, like I said, my knees are not the best. So if I do any kind of knee hold, it does cause a little bit of discomfort on the knees. So I usually try not to do that. The rule of thumb that I do when it comes to my workouts, and I really hope most people do, is if it causes me pain or discomfort, I either modify or I try to avoid the exercise. Or if it's something as simple, like I said, when it comes to doing a hold at the very end, I don't need to do a hold. I can just go and do a nice, slow, controlled eccentric and then go back up. And if it doesn't cause me any knee pain, I can go and continue to train without dealing with any stupid pain. So again, make sure guys, if it causes you pain, modify or avoid the exercise if you need to. There are more than one way to go and build muscle and train. All right, so I know this is something that I did not need, but I decided to go ahead and buy the isolator from Bulletproof Fitness. Got a couple times where I was able to chat with Larry, the CEO, 
And honestly, I just like what he's doing. I like the fact that he's actually putting a lot of effort into trying to innovate the home gym world equipment. And I wanted to, honestly, I wanted to try this piece out. It looked very good. And it's one of those pieces that you can do so much with. And honestly, it's something fun to just kind of try around and see all the different exercises you can do. Right now I'm doing hip thrusts and I'm kind of using a lot of the weight limit. But right now you can see a little bit of movement on the actual bench. But for the most part, this thing is very solid. Jumping on, we are doing some we're doing some tricep extensions. Sorry, I just realized that I haven't been telling you guys when I've been switching over to the next day. So guys, this is Thursday, and obviously the day before I'm changing my shirts and my outfit, so you should realize these days are actually, you know, not the exact same day. But I'm sure I'm going to edit and put something in there so you guys realize. But we did tricep extensions using the isolator. Moving on to some bicep curls. Now, this was another one of those weird exercises that was causing me some type of discomfort. And what I found out is I had to maintain a little bit more position where I was going out instead of going in when it came to the bicep curl, and that alleviated a lot of that irritation. So I was able to continue to train, and I got pretty close to failure on these. I think I got 50 pounds on the stack, 2 to 1 ratio, so 25 pounds. And I'm using the CAS handles. Jumping over to tricep extensions, um, the only reason why I'm not using the rotate handles, which is usually my handle of choice, is because I was having a little bit of irritation when it came to my arm. So I tried out these, and this caused me absolutely no pain. So again, modification, if something causes you pain, try something else. And unfortunately, if it doesn't work, just keep trying something else until you can figure out how to train around the pain train around the pain or honestly in the worst case scenario you're going to have to go and get it assessed by a physical therapist. That's if it's nagging pain and causing you actual issues over time. If it's just something where like oh my elbow hurts for a day or two you can usually just go ahead and do something else and give your body some time to rest and chances are it'll probably you know work itself out and if it continues, like I said, go and get a physical therapist to assess you, and then you'll figure out what you actually need to do. So that one was to failure. I couldn't actually do that stupid exercise anymore. You can see I really struggled on that one. I tried. I couldn't complete it. So technical failure. There you guys have it. And like I said, arms were being kind of stupid today. Jumped over to cable lateral raises, my favorite one now. But I just went for a pump. I ended up doing 20 reps on this, and I think it's only like 80 pounds because, honestly, everything was just being stupid when it came to my arm day, which is funny because I love arm day. I just didn't have the best arm day when it came down to this week. But I still filmed it, and you guys get to see the bad, the good, the bad, and sometimes the outright just sometimes you just have crap days and always nice to film it so you guys can see that not everybody's going to have the best workout and I am 100% an example of never having the best workout. There's not one week where I will have the most amazing workout when it comes down to it. It's always modification, training around some stupid pain when it comes to shoulders, arms, whatever and that's just how it is and like I said that's the reason why I have so much damn equipment. Because every time I have something going wrong with me, I just figure out how to either train around it or one of those pieces of equipment that I have laying around the gym will allow me to continue to train and train hard enough where I won't lose muscle compared to just skipping the exercise and not doing it. So now we're on Friday and it's back to a leg day type exercise. Here I am doing my seated calf raises. And like I said before, priority is calves. So I'm training calves twice a week. And I'm doing three to four sets roughly to failure on each one of these exercises. They are seated calf raises and they are standing calf raises. So this one you can see I'm doing a nice controlled tempo. I want everybody to realize I'm doing a very controlled tempo and that's the reason why that weight is so much smaller compared to what it possibly could be if I was just going around bouncing this weight 
off of my machine over and over and over. But chances are I wouldn't get any calves. And hopefully now that I'm controlling the eccentric and I'm doing a nice pause at the top and at the bottom, this translates into eventually getting some calves. Again, standing calf raises. We're using the new Henny belt, a lot more comfortable. Honestly, in this lighting, it looks like I don't lift, so I don't blame all the trolls out there that's saying, hey, bro, do you even lift? But unfortunately, it's called getting calories in, and right now I'm just struggling when it comes to calories. I've always been a hard gainer when it comes down to it, and I have this thing called stupid-ass IBS, where I struggle to eat the foods that I need to be able to eat, and usually I'm eating like chicken and rice. And being a hard gainer, you got to eat like 3,500 calories at least in order to actually start to grow. Not to mention, I'm always bloated when it comes down to it, so sometimes when it comes to these exercises, it's difficult to work out when you're constantly bloated. I don't know, it's kind of hard to explain. Like, you have this weird bubble in your stomach and then you're trying to work out, especially something like this exercise right here. Doing reverse hypers when you're bloated sucks. It's very difficult to do and, like I said, it's just one of those idiotic things that I have to work around with. I've had it for like five years now, so I'm pretty well good with dealing with it, but it still affects calories. So reverse hyper, I'm going and I'm using, I don't know, what is that, 35 and 10? So not a whole hell of a lot of weight, but I think I'm doing about 20 reps. So that's just kind of how I've been training when it comes to the reverse hyper. I'm not doing that much weight, but I'm doing enough reps to get a nice good burn when it comes to my back, my hamstrings, my glutes. This is one of those exercises that I have a love-hate relationship with, and it's Nordic drops. Starting off, I really suck at this exercise. I'll just automatically admit it. And it's one of the reasons why Freak Athlete has their new Nordic hamstring curl GHD hip thruster bench coming out. I placed a pre-order for it because, honestly, I have to have my knees together so tight when it comes to this exercise and I have almost slipped out of my bench a couple of times. So I feel like it's worth it to have something that's dedicated for especially a training that I'm actually enjoying doing because like I said healthy knees are kind of something important and I want to be able to train and get some healthy hamstrings as well and doing something that's that more lengthened exercise is going to benefit me in the whole long run. Here's a modification to be able to do adduction using the functional trainer. So I'm using some basically ankle cuffs, but they're actually from Body Elastic. So they're long enough to be able to go around my thighs. And then I have some furniture sliders on the floor where I'm able to go and basically do an adductor type exercise where usually you would need some kind of machine to do this. This I'm able to do where if I hold on for the dear life, of my plyo box. I can do this exercise with a decent amount of weight and it gives me a very good burn when it comes to the effectiveness of this exercise. So this is something you guys can try if you have a functional trainer at home. Last but not least, it is some tibia action. And you can see that I am using the Titan Fitness anterior tibialis machine. And yes, guys, this is meant for training the tibialis anterior. I've had some people comment and say like, oh, that doesn't do anything for calves. Well, no, it doesn't. It trains the front of your leg, which is the tibialis anterior muscle. And you can kind of see it working when it comes to my exercise right here. And really, I'm just going for training to failure. I'm going as much as I can to get a very good burn and one thing I do want to point out that I mentioned in my review is you can see that the small little difference of the weight horn, when I'm doing this exercise, you'll see that it kind of rocks itself back and forth and it gets farther away. It doesn't fall off, but it is kind of annoying. So guys, I hope you enjoyed this workout. If you guys did, please go ahead and hit the like button. Any comments, let me know. And if you guys haven't already, make sure you guys hit that subscribe button. Otherwise, I hope you guys all have a wonderful day. Take care.